Welcome back, fellow audio enthusiast. It is I, Jason, your host and purveyor of two-channel listening. Yes, today's review is just a little bit more dearer and nearer to my heart than usual. Over two years ago, when I launched my very first YouTube video, the stars of that show happened to be the Aperion Audio Intimus 4B bookshelf speakers. Yes, I was quite smitten with those speakers. They just had this level of fit and finish and build quality performance for a low budget, very, very low retail, high performance factor. And they were just incredibly impressive for, they were incredibly impressive to me at that time. And they just happened to be the perfect speaker for living the apartment life as I was at that time with my family. Little more than a year after that, a Dallas bar from Aperion Audio happened to see that video and reached out to me. Said, hey, let's talk about doing a review on something more modern and new. Just happens to be at that time that I was planning my move out of Boise, Idaho, and I asked him to let's put this conversation on ice until I'm all settled in the new place and I can give it my full attention. Fast forward, here we are. I reached back out to Dallas. We got to talking and he said, you know what? You tell me, what do you think is the most ideal product for you to reveal for the two channel listening audience. Now, you know me, I'm not gonna go for that, the best seller, I'm not gonna go for the most popular product in anybody's catalog. I wanna review products that I think stand out uniquely for their own reasons. So it was a no brainer for me to tell Dallas, ship me your top of the line N6T towers, and here we are. For, the, for those of you who are newer, if you haven't been following the direct to consumer hi fi market, you might not have heard of Aperion Audio before. But Aperion Audio, like Ascend Acoustics or like Tecton Designs, what you're getting is a different direct to consumer model. Those companies, they focus more on small batch quality. They focus more on small batch quantity. So you, the consumer, you're getting a, you're getting a higher quality product that has more value components installed in it, as well as saving at least 40% off of retail prices compared to other products that have a full dealer network. Now, I understand that buying from online only has its drawbacks, but most of those companies, they have something like 45 to 60 day return policies. So there's really not much for you to lose when testing out speakers like Aperion Audio. Now, for me personally, the Aperion Audio represents a unique challenge. These are $1,698 as configured. And when looking at the playing field, that tells me that I'm going to be looking at anything that's from $1,500, truthfully up to $2,700 if it's a mass produced product to be able to compare directly to this Novus N6Ts. So I put together just real quickly, just some of the speakers that I found that would be direct competitors to the N6Ts and I have them here for you to peruse. Now you're going to immediately recognize two of the speakers on that list. Yes, my very own pair of the Zoo Omen or the Zoo Dirty Weekend Mark IIs 
as well as the Tecton Aruz. I bought both of those speakers, had factory extras added to them, and both of those speakers are a perfect comparison to these Novus because they each came in within a few dollars of this $1,700 price point. So, cue the beads of sweat starting on the brow of Mr. Dallas Ibarra as he continues to watch where I go with this review. Let's talk fit and finish and build quality, shall we? Yes, let's. Unique design features. Let me just say this. Yes, I ordered the matte white finish. Let me tell you, I'm so over piano black. I'm absolutely over piano black. I am, I am grateful to see this finish, these beautiful cabinets with these nice radius edges that are both top and bottom. So you just have these soft corners and then all of the edges are softly rounded off as well. And it's just a very nice uniform finish and there's no joints. There's no, you're not going to run your fingers and fill any joints anywhere in the speaker. And particularly, you're not going to have those weird baffles where you just have this baffle slapped onto a box much like those $3,000 Canton Chrono 90s I just reviewed a few weeks ago. So the, the, just from a looks perspective and how it fits in the decor, let me tell you, it's, it's a breath of fresh air to have something like this in the corners of my room that isn't absorbing and sucking light away like so many black speakers or piano black speakers. And you don't immediately see the fingerprints and just every little micro piece of dust that falls on the top of the speakers. So I prefer that. Around the back, you have one set of binding posts that are non-ferrous material, non-ferrous metal, way to go guys. And what you're gonna see above those binding posts is, the, is what's becoming kind of a trademark appearing audio offering at, at, uh, for their towers. And that is that they have what they call the treble mod. And you have this little jumper that when it's in place, the speaker is supposed to be at flat zero dB. If you pull this out, you can trim, you can trim the tweeter back minus three dB. I'll talk more about this later. And that, you know, the reason to design this into the Aperion lineup. Around front, you have very nicely integrated Simple and easy to slide off grills. It's actually made out of a very light wood. Nice job there. Something else I want to point out versus the $3,000 speakers I covered a couple weeks ago, there's no metal contacts. So the magnets are integrated into the front of the speaker and the grill. And so you don't have any of those harsh touch points that's going to scratch the finish. Good job there, guys and gals. You have these oversized rubber flanges that hide the mounting parts. So you don't have any of those cheesy beauty rings. You don't have any of those cheesy plastic rings that are glued on or held in with simple um, compression pins. Good job there. The bottom, the feet, you have metal footers that have adjustable spikes and the all, they already come um, from the factory with these nice rubber pads on them for the wood floors that I have. Again, nice job on the fit and finish design there. Let's talk about what I think is the most striking part of these speakers other than just the overall um, soft finish. There's no plastic base ports. There's none of those cheesy cardboard circles or cardboard or plastic uh, inserts for your base ports. No, they went the extra mile. What you have is this very nice recess in the beginning of the reflex base port. Guess what? This is all MDF material. And what you have is this base port, this goes, it's sandwiched MDF that goes all the way inside the cavity, five inches, so top to bottom, 
this is tuned to go in five inches into the cavity of the speaker itself and basically that helps to manage the airflow and reduces the turbulence so what you have is you have a front firing noiseless base port very nice job on the execution of that especially for a seventeen hundred dollar speaker good job of pairing audio the front baffle is also very subtly sloped for what they call a bit of time alignment with the front drivers and let's talk about the drivers what you have are two six and a half inch woofers that are in a two-way design no this is not a two and a half way design this is strictly just a two-way design mtm six and a half inch six and a half inch both play up to 20 29 hertz 2900 hertz and the handoff goes to this German source soft dome uh, one inch textile tweeter that's supposed to take everything all the way up to 30 kilohertz. And that's finished and affixed to this, this metal plate. I would be remiss if I also didn't talk about the crossover. This is the direct to consumer benefit to you, the buyer. Look at the parts quality of this $1,700 speaker, folks. Look at those resistors. You have actual ceramic resistors, not sand cast resistors. You have actual poly caps, save for that one lowly little electric, electrolytic cap. And then you have the three coils, two iron core and one air coil on a very simple uh, crossover that also has to take into account that it has this uh, trim jumper um, as an option. Very simple and it makes it for a pretty efficient design. It is a four ohm speaker, but it's 89 dB at one watt and uh, no issues with my, my smallest uh, D7-7050 NAD integrated amplifier. All right. So having covered off on the absolute fit and finish, I think in person it is a very handsome speaker, fits well with the decor, and at its price point, I'm going to say it smokes the fit and finish of my Tecton or Ruse that I have had. Okay, let's talk about the setup. Now, I have to elaborate a little bit more than usual with the setup of these speakers. These were, these were fresh out of the box, and I got to tell you, they were pretty darn bright to me. And it didn't matter what the toe-in was. It didn't matter what the distance was in the setup. I did lots of playing over the first couple of weeks to get these things going. I can also say with absolute confidence that it had a lot to do with the break-in, because behind me, I have no less than six different amplifiers. And across all six amplifiers, there was a consistency with a, um, a hard bite above 85 dB playback with the N6Ts. So these naturally have a, um, a very high upper tilt uh, factor to them. There was a magic number, I'm going to say it was around about 50 hours. At about around 50 hours, there was a mellowing out, and then I also stumbled upon another, another fix to help balance out the sound of these while I did my critical listening. So while Aperion Audio does give you this treble mod, the issue I found with the treble mod is that when I pulled this out to cut the to cut the treble back 3 dB, all that really happened in their normal sitting position is that the upper woofer tended to overpower and give just a little bit more bloom to the mix. The tiniest little bit of recess with the, with the tweeter basically attenuated some of the detail that I was hearing prior, so I didn't like that I was now missing some of that detail. And in no way, shape, or form did this trim help the, or aid the actual mid-range um, presentation of the speaker. So what happened is I just put this back in for the remainder of all of my critical listening. 
and I decided, you know what, I was going to try this. What I have here is a, a set of very affordable um, 1.75 inch tall subwoofer cones from Sound Addicted. So I placed these under each of the speakers and that helped raise the tweeter to a lot, a, a little bit more in line with my, my ears at my listening position so that they weren't far off and I wasn't hearing so much of just the, the upper woofer. That tended to give a better blend between the fifth, hitting over 50 hours and these little subwoofer cones that really um, opened up and kind of at the same time mellowed out the mix that I was hearing with the appearance. Your, your mileage may vary. And here was how I ended up with my final configuration. They were tilted in roughly about 10 degrees off axis for the balance of my critical listening. The more I listened to these N6Ts, I just couldn't help in thinking about my Zoo Dirty Week and Mark IIs the, almost the entire time. They were, these are so closely voiced, or I should say so similarly voiced with the characteristics that my Zoo Dirty Weekends had. And those Zoo Dirty Weekends also had the clarity caps with the footers. Like I said, it had the factory upgrades on, that, on those speakers. So, you know, apples to apples here, price and performance wise. The other key characteristics that just, they felt like those two were just, you know, brothers from, a, from another mother is that both speakers have this tenacious ability to give you bleeding edge or leading edge detail. When it comes to uh, metallic instruments, you're getting just, you're getting every detail out of those instruments, very long decay times, lots of inner detail. And I would also say even like with, with the wind instruments, you're getting a high degree of a lot of airy um, bloom, strong bloom from these speakers, just like how I remember with the Dirty Weekends. As a matter of fact, I, that brought me to listening to days on end. I went through so many uh, tracks, so many albums of Aaron Copeland, and I spent a lot of time going through Aaron Copeland's ensembles. Appalachian Springs. The, these speakers can, with their front firing ports, they can do those dynamic timpani drum strikes very well. Absolutely sharp, absolutely punchy, good depth to them, and again, reminding me a lot of the front firing Tecton Aruz similar in fashion, but I would say as far as bass integration into the room, I would give the slight nod to the Zoo Dirty Weekends because they have the down firing finger ports that distributed the bass more evenly into the room to where these were more in line with the front firing tecton or roofs. Now, speaking of that bleeding edge details, there's something about the Aperion lineup, especially these Novus, where these are trying so hard to be overachieving speakers at their price point. They want to do everything as best as they can. And yet, you know, with that amazing detail retrieval, there were times where when I got a little too happy with the volume on the remotes, these German tweeters would unceremoniously slap me about my ears. So that's just, you know, that was just the nature of the beast with these. To illustrate that point, while listening to Aaron Copeland's Symphony No. 3 with simple expression, about six minutes into, into that, now I was using my middle of the road, my NAD C388 integrated amplifier, 150 watts with the Blue OS uh, module, what I found to be a really good balance with these speakers for a majority of the time. However, six minutes into that track, Mr. Aaron decided to blend in 
high sharp violin notes with high sharp flute notes and for my added for our added pleasure he decided to go with the high notes of the glockenspiel now for me that was just too much of a good thing you had all those high notes swarming together into this cacophony of melodrama and it just it was a bit too much for me much like much like the Dirty Weekends, I remember. And for that round, once again, I would say that my ribbon, my ribbon tweeter equipped Tecton or Ruse, those went out hands down for the smoothest upper treble presentation at the $1,700 price point. And another perfect example of letting you know how good or not so good your source materials and amplification are I was playing one of my other favorite tracks, which is from the Alan Parsons Project. It is Tales of Mystery and Imagination. You know it well, track number two, The Raven. When connected to my 10-year-old Peachtree Separates, those original Peachtree Separates, Mr. Eric Wolfson's synthesized vocals with all of my setups, they're either intelligible or they're not so intelligible. Sometimes that synthesized blended voice can be a little warbled or you don't exactly make out every single lyric. And as I found out with the novice, I definitely struggled to hear every lyric clearly until I plugged in my very fresh Peachtree pre DAC with the Gain 400 amp connected to the iFi DAC. With that, all of a sudden, everything sharply came into view, and I could hear every single I can hear every single syllable as Mr. Eric went through the very famous Poe poem. Very enjoyable listening listening with that combination with the Novus. However, however, what I find to be something I have to pause on when it comes to the amplification. My much more expensive Harvest, my much more expensive Harvest C7 ES3 ESXDs. Oh, this guy's Novus six, N6T. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> God, this is me off. But my much more expensive Harvest C7s. When listening to those, you know what, guys? I could connect. I could connect this old D7050 NAD amplifier that you can buy used right now for anywhere for 250 bucks. And you know what? I've got hour after hour after hour of enjoyment with those harbus. Yes, there's some stuff that's left on the table, but it's not a lot that's left off the table. Let me tell you, the harbus, they just, uh, you have that warmth inner detail still you have a very enjoyable large presentation and what i'm getting at is those speakers while they are very expensive to me at forty eight hundred dollars the juxtaposition is i can attach a three hundred dollar integrated amplifier to them and live with them for a very long time what's interesting about something like a zoo and especially these appearing audio n6ts with their nature is they only really sounded their absolute best, their cleanest, when attached to my most expensive combinations, totaling over $4,000, which how often are you gonna throw a $4,000 front end at a $1,700 speaker? So, you know, when I connected the D3045, for example, that left a lot off the table and it just it made it so that I was only really happily listening to these at 80 dB or less. When I started to go above that, the the amplification in there just it uh, it was I would get a fatigue factor. Let's just put it that way. And so I find it's, you know, the musicality of these speakers and their tenacious ability to be so detail-driven, so um, want of the absolute last say on what you're going to hear in any given track makes it pretty tough to listen to some of my hard rock 
and there, you know, and basically that brings me back to the happy medium that I found with why I chose my Tecton Aruz over the Zoo Dirty Weekends. The Tecton Aruz, once again, with that 10 inch eminence cut off at 5,000 hertz with that ribbon tweeter, let me tell you, again, you could throw whatever amplifier you wanted to at those speakers and they are enjoyable all day long at just about any dB level. However, those are not exactly meant to be dual purpose speakers. And that brings me back to what the Aperion Audio overall company arching philosophy is. They have, they engineer these speakers with absolute duality in mind. And what do I mean by that? They specialize in home theater packages. They specialize in home theater speakers with the Bravis line and the Novus line. I take these, I throw them in my front room, and I have a Marantz SR7050 uh, home, theater, home theater receiver. Once I get that configuration going with my subwoofer in my, in my main center channel, all of a sudden, you know, these detail machines, they really come into their own. You want to hear the gravel spitting across a dirt road? Check. You want to hear that gently wafting breeze through the tall grasses in a large field? Check. You want to hear the light rhythmic pattern of rain falling on a tin roof? Check. You want a rapid succession, instantaneous, ear-splitting sequence of gunfire? Checkmate. Boom. Yes, that's when these speakers really come into their own as the front mains of a home theater system. Now, very unlike Zoo Audio, very unlike Tecton <laughs> Design Audio, Aperion Audio makes the companion products, beautiful, handsome companion products that perfectly match with these speakers. It's not to say that Tecton won't match home theater kit, but let's just get this straight. Those are some ungainly, totally conspicuous, big old chunky block, blocky boxes that got to be spread out across your room. And with how much airspace they take up, you feel like you're in a room full of a bunch of a bunch of chunky blocks boxes. The way that the fit and finish of these are with those nice stackable. Atmos speakers, the beautiful dipoles that they're making for these now, the, the absolutely beautiful uh, dual purpose subwoofers, the center channel. Perian Audio makes really beautiful companion kit to go with their speakers. And they're also very significant other friendly as well, mind you. I got, got a few additional compliments from the fairer sex when it comes to these, the look of these speakers versus, you know, Amanda didn't like the Tectons. She just did not like the way they looked. She didn't mind the Zoos because it had the beauty rings, but it is what it is. So, you know, you're getting that extra amount of bargain in the $1,700 price tag. Now, to conclude on this note, if you're newer to hi-fi and you're unaware of the direct-to-consumer model, let me tell you, if for some reason you have Focal in mind, if for some reason you have Bowers and Wilkins in mind, or you're already sitting on a second or third generation back of those products, you absolutely have to consider listening to these speakers. I know the BMW sound, and let me tell you, start here first. Look. If you followed me up to this point in this video, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna ask for one thing. You see that glowing vacuum tube in your bottom right-hand corner? Would you give that a click for me, please? Really would be nice if you did that. You've spent this much time with me, go the extra inch and click that vacuum tube for me and subscribe to my channel. Other than that, folks, I really, it was an interesting time with the Aperion Audio. I think that there are, there are folks out there that love that last bit of detail who want to hear the flakes of spittle flying from the lips of their favorite singers. The fact that Aperion Audio includes 
a treble mod with their speakers kind of gives you insight into what the voicing characteristics of these are out of the gate. So that's a good indicator for you to know that you're dealing with a speaker that is going to lean towards absolute full detail and not that, that British sound. These are the anti-British speakers, let me tell you that. And with that, I thank you for your time. Tune in, and I am going to cover off on some budget, super budget NED integrateds in the coming week or two. Thank you, and have a wonderful week, you all.